Hey everybody, it's uh, Jack and Lumber Jack. Um, we're going to be uh, discussing and going over the uh, tree that I chopped down and the video that I got from it. Um, but first, I want to mention, uh, really appreciate if you were to like and subscribe to the video and also leave any comments that you feel. Um, gives me more things to talk about and also more things to improve on. So any criticism is appreciated. Um, going into that, uh, this tree was a bit of a pain overall. Um, one of the things that I was worried about was due to the large branches at the top of the tree and the way it was leaning is it was going to either fall on a shed or the house. So to alleviate that, we attached a large cable on it and then attached that cable to a pulley. Uh, that process wasn't too bad, but one of the issues that we kept running into was there wasn't many branches lower level um, and we just couldn't get the cable up high enough. So I think we were only able to get it 20 feet up, which made it a lot harder to pull down eventually. Um, it also made it so that we weren't able to get a very good pull down on it because it was coming from basically the bottom of the tree. Um, when I was looking at it earlier, I believe it was about 110 feet tall. And because of that, well, having the cable only 20 feet up, doesn't exactly give it a very good pull arm and uh, the moment angle is not very good. Uh, that's more physics, but anyway. So the biggest thing for these types of trees is trying to get them safely hooked up, but also making sure that if you are trying to use a pulley system like I did, it's called a block and tackle. Um, but if you're trying to do that, you need to make sure you're using, you know, adequate straps so they to attach to some kind of anchor point. I used uh, multiple ropes or straps that were from about uh, 5,000 pounds to 2,600 pounds. Um, they're very good for anchor points. I wrapped them multiple times. And then the uh, one strap that I did have that was a little lighter, I had made sure I doubled it. Um, so that jumped it back up to about 5,200 pounds of, of to pull back on. So didn't have any problems with that. Luckily, uh, when you have a cable that's under extreme tension that snaps, you, you can kill you. So you gotta be really careful. Um, I then attached that to my truck to then get the line taut initially. And that's how it stayed there the entire time I cut it down. Maybe I should have had it loose in the beginning. May, I mean, not really sure. Don't have a lot of experience doing it. I've done it a few times. Um, but I'm always trying to learn more. So um, let's get into uh, let's get into this. So for this tree, it takes a lot more planning as i mentioned before um, attaching the cable and figuring out where i want it to fall um, and by far the most annoying thing is always having to start you gotta get somewhere with it and it just it's really annoying because you know as soon as you start it's gonna take multiple hours and a lot of fatigue but that's kind of the name of the game. Could use a chainsaw, cut it down real fast, but that's not my uh, forte. I enjoy this more. Um, it is also a great workout, as I've said before, but it's the uh, journey, not the destination.
As you can see, I have changed my position from the left side to the right side, um, switching from my dominant side, which is swinging to the right. Um, I'm now using my left to swing. Now this, for me, is a lot harder, but is a lot less painful in the long run, as you don't have to do as much with your dominant side, and it also gives you another angle of attack, which is important when you have to cut down these massive trees. Um, it also can be applied to a life lesson, in the sense that, well, if you're doing something one way the whole time, switching it up might help, or finish it out. So, if something's not working and you're doing it the same way every time, change it up, see what happens.
No, I don't need to touch it. So, after hearing the crack, I decided it would be a good idea to move the camera as I've had trees crack once or twice and then fall immediately. And I've also had trees that cracked and then it takes another hour and a half to cut them down. This is that tree. But uh, anyway, just so I don't have to lose a camera, I usually move it out of the way from where I expect it to fall. Which was where the camera was. That did not happen in the end, though. You wouldn't think that you would actually miss a tree uh, when you're swinging it, but occasionally when you're trying to aim for a very small piece or part, uh, occasionally you do miss it, or it slips, or you don't get a good bite. So that that's what happened there. And it's not fun because instead of having the tree decelerate your swing, you have to have your body do it. And that is not good. So, here we are, chopping the other side of the tree. This is to create a hitch point 
uh, where the tree will then lose strength on the back end and then fall over where we've already been cutting. This can be a pretty quick process, usually to the end of the tree, or it can be another hour. Just depends. This one took a while still. Uh, eventually you'll see me actually use a sledgehammer and a couple wedges, like right here. And uh, this is to do the same thing, just to crush more of those fibers and uh, try to weaken the internal parts of the tree. Much like when I completely missed the tree, I lost the head of the sledgehammer, which was in the grass, pretty far away. Um, I want the sledgehammer to be on the top of the handle, and it did not stay that way. Uh, things happen, it's kind of an old sledgehammer, uh, and sadly I had to use the maul, which is I think 6 pounds versus the four pounds that the uh, sledgehammer is. So, it's a lot harder, but I mean, I guess in terms of driving force, the uh, six pound ball worked pretty well. So, yeah. So there is merit to working until completion, and I'm a fond believer in that, but I'm also understanding that if you're not doing as well as you could, sometimes taking a break, letting your body heal and rest is a good idea. At that point, I realized I wasn't going to get much farther and wait until the next day where I felt better. Well, not that much better. Here you can also see that I moved the camera back a little bit more and try to tilt it up. Mostly so that I could see the top of the tree. Although, you still can't see the top, but you can see a lot higher up. Um, with this tree, it's about 110 feet tall. So, probably one of the tallest I've cut down. Um, not the largest width but very tall tree, so it's kind of crazy when it does finally fall.
So, now you can see that we're getting toward the end, or at least I can see it. So I'll uh, usually take off my headphones, take them out, and uh, listen for any cracks or creaking that the tree's gonna make. Just because sometimes it's very quick and you gotta react quickly to that. Um, I also take off my right glove so that I can actually videotape the tree falling with my phone as well, just for another perspective. But, uh, yeah. You gotta be very aware with these things. Um, I'm gonna say the tree is like 8,000 to 10,000 pounds. And if it were to fall on you, you're not gonna come out of that one. So, being uh, extremely vigilant and aware to your senses is extremely important. So, yeah. that crack, I've heard it a lot, so I kind of know that's like the main fibers giving away. Come on, baby. That's when I know to step back. 